what is going on everybody welcome back to the channel we're not doing any modifications today we are doing some brakes a lot of you guys have been asking what are we gonna be doing when we need brakes well we don't need brakes but we're putting new brakes on tonight and we're gonna talk about the ones that we chose and I'm tired of the dust because we clean them a lot and it's no more dusty time new brakes here we come let's go All right guys, thanks so much for checking us out. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe. Tonight, we are doing a full wheel brake job and I'm gonna show you without using a hoist. I'm gonna show you how to do it in your driveway. We're gonna be using all the best safety practices. But now, you might want to ask, what brakes are we putting on? We have Power Stop Extreme. These are the Z36 truck and tow. And we have new front rotors, new rear rotors. Check them out. Check them out. Front driver side, new rotors. Ooh, they look nice. So these are the ones we are using. What brakes are you using on your truck? Are you using factory? Uh, are you using something aftermarket? I have used Wagner Thermal Quiets uh, many years doing brakes at home, brakes on, on relatives and friends' cars. But now there is another product out here called Power Stop. One of my best friends who was a GM employee actually has these brake pads on his Camaro and has zero dust. And it got me kind of thinking like, dude, so many guys complain that their new Super Duty is has so much dust on the front wheels, not so much the rear, but the front, we are just compiled with brake dust. And I cleaned these, I cleaned these uh, maybe five days ago and I've driven it every day since then. So let's do the finger swipe test. Look at the difference. Definitely some brake dust on here. Um, and a lot of guys, if you have the chrome wheels, they get really dirty. So let's get this set up. We're not using this. We are gonna be using those and we're gonna be using that right there. And I'm gonna jack up the front end and I'm gonna jack up the back end. We're gonna do the front first and then we're gonna do the back. And I'm gonna show you exactly uh, what you have to do even when you're getting to the rear because I want you guys to feel confident when you go to do your rear brakes because those parking brakes, uh, they can be a bugger. Don't fret, I'll show you how to de-adjust them and uh, maybe you don't need to, maybe they'll pop right off. It just all depends on how rotted out them rear rotors are. So let's get this thing jacked up and I will uh, we'll start removing these front tires. All right, the first thing we're gonna do when we jack up the back of the front of the vehicle is we're gonna have to get some wheel chocks and put those either in the front or in the back, depending on where you're gonna start. We're gonna be, we're gonna be starting ours on the back. All right, ah, all right. All right, now let's get the jack and we're gonna start lifting.
All right, we are jacked up. Wheels are completely off the ground. And now it's time to take these puppies off. Okay, it's super important to pay attention when you take these wheels off because you can scratch these wheel covers when you take them off. I'm using a thin walled 21. And I'm gonna loosen one of the lug nuts and then pull off the whole entire cap and then switching back to a thick wall. All right, here is the front brakes. We need to do a couple of things. First, what I'm gonna do is, let's turn the steering wheel all the way to the left. All right, let's see what we're looking at. We need a 16, I believe 16. Let's see, 16, yes, yeah, 16. And we have 21s that are holding the bridge to the actual uh, knuckle. So uh, let's get these 16s out. All right, 16 milli coming at you. This is for the caliper, caliper bolts. All right, the caliper should kind of pop off. It should kind of pop off. Otherwise, get a screwdriver and kind of do one of these things come from the bottom and come from the top and it pops off kind of like that i'm gonna set the caliper up here and here is the brake material you guys can see we still have some meat left here uh but we're not gonna we're not gonna use these anymore all this brake dust holy for holes okay get the brake pads out you can see I'm just prying against the rotor. You see them, they're falling right out, no big deal. Uh, depending if you're doing front end work, I mean, you, you might have to reuse these, so be careful with them. We are not reusing these, but when you get to the point of pushing the piston back in the caliper, I'm gonna take my old brake pad and we're gonna go get this tool right here. This is my brake pad brake caliper, spreader, tool, thingy, thing, thing, thingy. It's gonna go in here somewhat like this. Let me see if I can, see if I can get this here. Okay, I'm spreading the tool. This is gonna spread. I'm holding this with my knees right now. Ugh my groin. I should have used my thigh master. Oh, Suzanne Summers. We need to get one of these things. Oh, all right. Whew. Check it out. Pistons back in. It's no big deal. The brake master cylinder cap, um, I don't have to take off. There's really no reason to. Uh, you guys can leave this sitting here or you can kind of put this over your sway bar, kind of giving it some support so it's not hanging. We don't like it hanging. Now we need to go for our two. We're gonna be popping this whole bracket off. All right, we're gonna get our 21s and pop our 21s out. Okay, brackets off. We will have to clean that up. Uh, but the last part we got to take off is the is the freaking rotor, and that can kind of be a pain in the butt. Let's see if it's gonna come off with no problem.
Wow. Well, it came off. Christ, man. Rusted to hell. Well, if you don't have any compressed air, um, I'm going to recommend that you blow all of the rust. If you're in a state that has all that. I think I'm going to put this on autopilot and you guys can watch what's about to unfold. Time for the fun parts. We got front brakes, we got rear brakes, and I think this is right front rotor. If I put this in here correctly, front passenger side. Okay, here's the rotor we want. Freaking exciting. Look how glory this, glorious this is. Freaking glorious. Glorious. This is this is the part number for the right front rotor. Let's get this heavy thing out of my hand and on to this truck. Dang! Look at that. All right, I'm gonna. That's not gonna work. I was just trying to screw a lug nut on just so that we can hold this rotor, but I don't have any, I wonder if I got any washers or any nuts. Here we go, I'll put on a couple of these nuts. Will this slip over the stud? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Just like the Kool-Aid guy, oh yeah. Oh yeah. There we go. Now we can hold the rotor on and it's not gonna be in our freaking way. Now it's gonna be time, now it's gonna be time to clean this bracket. We want to pop out all of these clips because we have gotten new ones with the brake pads. These just pop right out like you see me doing here. And then once we clean this up, we're gonna pull these out and we're gonna put some brake caliper grease in here, each one of them. Sometimes on different vehicles, each slide may be a different size, so you wanna make sure you put the right one back in the right spot because then you're gonna have some sort of braking issue or brake pull, so make sure you do one side at a time. Take this off, this is the bottom, this is the top, so you don't do something, something stupid. But fortunately for us, our super duty ones are, are uh, the same same size so let's get to cleaning However you gotta clean the rust up, whether it's grinding or you're using a little steel uh, bristle brush, brush um, that is what you're supposed to do. Uh, because you don't wanna put uh, new clips on all this rusted bracket. So let me get the new clips and we gonna put them in. All right, this is the brake part number for your front brake pads. We're not gonna need that anymore. But here are our clips and I will show you how these mamma jammas are gonna go on. Alright we got the clip 
we got two different sides. We have this flat side and this side with the little foot. Well, let's talk about common sense here. We're not gonna put the foot towards the rotor now, are we? We're gonna put the foot on the outside. Let's not be Billy Bob. Same goes for the other side. The top and the bottom are both, both the exact same. You're gonna push them down until they completely, you know, bottom out. I'll show you. That looks good. This last one here. Boom, boom. All right, check it out. See how nice, see how nice that looks? They're all sitting in there nice and flush. Oh yeah. So now we can get this out of our hands and we can install this back onto the truck. And we'll take our big 21 mil bolts. We're gonna put this on like this. And the bottom one. Then our 21, we're gonna we're gonna run them home. Okay, those are nice and tight. So now we need to pay attention sometimes um, when we do front brakes or rear brakes. Sometimes the pad has an indication. They'll say inner or outer, or it'll just say outside, and the other one would be the inside. Well, these power stop ones do not have any differentiating marks indicating inside or outside. You'll pay attention. Some may have this on the inside only. Some may have a, a sticker you gotta peel, um, but we're not gonna have to worry about that. So they look, they look both the same. But what we are gonna do before we put the pads in there, respective spots is we're gonna take some silicone brake grease. This is Ford part number XG3A. And um, we're gonna kind of go like this and squeeze just a little, just a little dab onto here. And this is what I like to do. Go like this. These are moving parts. I'm not putting anti-seize on here. This is silicone caliper, caliper grease. Sometimes brakes come with uh, a little bag of stuff such as these pads did. Um, but this is the stuff that I use when I do, when I do my brake jobs. All right, that's one, two. This is gonna be the same lubricant we're gonna put in our caliper slides when we get done with this part. You don't want to go too crazy because if this stuff melts and get up, gets on your brake pads, well, that's not that's not going to be good. All right, only go in one way. Okay, next brake pad inside. I always put the bottom in first. I don't know, that's just me. But the brake pads, brake pads are in. Clean my fingerprints off. And then uh, we need to get our slides. Here is slide one. And I like to do something like this. And I'll kind of wipe it down into the rubber boot. So it kind of has like a, a lubrication cavity filled. And then you, when you push it in, the excess lubricant likes to uh, kind of splooge out there. So we're gonna wipe the excess off, make everybody happy. Put that guy back in, see how it's kind of squeezing out. Go ahead and twist this, wipe the excess off. Then we are really at the point for the caliper, which is now gonna come 
back over and put it in. Put the inside in, then the outside. I'm squeezing the slides in. Caliper sitting. And we got our 16 mil caliper bolts. And then we are going to repeat this same procedure for the driver side. And then I am going to do the rear. We are going to do the rears. And then the most important thing that we're going to do is making sure that our braking procedure is going to be followed because it is imperative to follow those instructions when we first start our braking application because uh, there are some explicit instructions from PowerStop. Our front brake is on, check it out. Let's repeat this for the driver's side and then we will start the rears. All right, guys, here we are. We got the front brakes all done. The tires and everything are back on. The brakes look freaking stunning. We're gonna be jacking the back of the truck up, so I moved the tire chocks to the front, and uh, we got the front all buttoned up. But here's the back. We're gonna finish the left rear, and we are using the Vivor jack. If you guys remember the air jack that we used on one of the videos, I got two jack stands sitting right here on the axle tube. That's where you're gonna to wanna to jack the truck up. But now it is time to take off the rear tire. Uh, grab, grab this. Yep. Let's get some lighting in here. We need some fucking lumens. Push right down to the floor. All right, now that we got these bottom bolts and top bolts out, now remember how I showed you how to pull the caliper off the front. We're just gonna wiggle the top and the bottom right here I'm just going to wiggle the caliper off I'm going to be fighting some rust I'm going to be fighting some build up on the pads but we go over the bottom come back to the top you can see the witness mark here it's already moving away and we just got to keep rocking it rocking it sometimes you can use two pry bars but just kind of like he's doing here boom it's going to come off right now yep go back to the top yep Go up, uh, pull, pull away. There you go. Uh, pull the screwdriver up more so you get more leverage. There you go. There you go. Good job. All right, now I just set, I just set these rear calipers kind of like this, so they're not, so they're not hanging on the, the brake lines. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and pop these pads out. So we'll go ahead and get the flat blade, kind of wiggle them out see how thick we are right here we still have a lot of a lot of pad material um, but when I did the passenger side my bottom 
slide pin was completely froze. So I did have to lubricate that up and clean all that rust off that because that is gonna inhibit the caliper from actually floating. So that's, that's a no good. So we're gonna take the old brake pad. We're gonna get the uh, brake pad spreader tool thingy uh, underneath the cart, underneath your legs, underneath your ass. There we go. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and pop this tool in here. Yeah, yeah. And we're gonna hit the little lock loosen tab. We just did it. And we're gonna go ahead and spread it. Yep, and hold that piece right there, this piece here, just so it doesn't, doesn't spin. Okay, we're gonna keep ratcheting it. It's gonna open. Yep, yep. Okay. okay, you see how he's got it kind of off center. Let's move that into the center. Okay, keep going. We want to make sure we spread both. We want to make sure we put both pistons into the caliper at the same time. So he's getting tighter and now he's got all the tension on the brake pad. You see it's spreading it. Both pistons are going in simultaneously. And we're all going to go until it stops. You can't force it anymore. We hit the uh, little lock thing. And we can go ahead and pull the brake pad out. Now check it out. You can either use a C-clamp or you can use what you saw me use here. This is a, uh, uh, let me see that tool. This is a Cornwell tool. Part number RB279. Definitely a good a good buy. Um, all right, so we're gonna leave this right on top of the axle too. Again, I don't want it to, to fall and make these lines mess up. Okay, up front, these are 21s. Up here in the back, back here in the rear, these are 15 sixteenths. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my man set up. We have this and a short guy. So we're gonna put those two together. We're gonna give him the gun. Come on the back side of everything here and loosen these big giant bolts that hold the caliper bracket to the actual axle uh, axle housing or axle end or whatever. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep the gun nice and straight when you do that. That fucker will fling off at you. Okay, rear caliper bracket coming off exactly like the front. And that's what's cool about the Super Duty stuff. Um, the front pads are kind of like the rear pads and even the clips and everything. Um, the rear ones are just a tad smaller, but uh, 450s, 550s, the front brakes are the same as the back brakes as far as pads, so. All right, the next step is gonna be taking this rotor off. Now, depending on how rusted your truck is or what part of the country you're in or how many miles this thing has on it is really going to depict how easy this rear rotors rear rotors are going to come off the passenger side did not fight me at all i had to use a little muscle but it wound up coming off and i did not have to de-adjust the parking brakes this one i haven't messed with and we are going to see right now if that is what's going to take place we need that bfh where is that BFH? Where did I put that BFH? Oh, maybe I put it away. Ah, yes, I did. Okay. I don't know what side you swing on, Chief, but uh, we need to hit the rotor either here or here. Not here, not here, not here. So do what you got to do. Okay. Switching to this side. You got to... We have to break that covalent bond, that rust bond between here and the face of the axle flange, or not flange, but the, the, the face that it meets to, and the rust that's built up against the e-brakes, because the e-brakes push out against this drum. This is a drum brake, just like we used to have in the old days. Keep doing it. Watch. See it? See it jumping? Okay. Okay, go ahead and sit down back on your chair. Now this rotor should pull right off at nine and three o'clock. Gonna have to wiggle it back and forth. Gonna have to muscle it. 
We're trying to slide it right across the emergency brakes. It'll be a pain in the dick. Now, if this does not come and we had to keep doing this back and forth, we would have to get underneath the truck and de-adjust the parking brake shoe. So that, that can be kind of a pain. All right, why don't we tap the rotor back on? Tap it back on, tap it over here. Yep, let's get it seated all the way back down. Okay, maybe it was kind of cocked. Okay, so now try to pull it off. See how far we can get. Now you could keep pulling this, you could keep pulling this and it actually rip the e-brake shoes out of the backing plate. So you got to kind of use judgment when you're doing this and know when to stop. But um, I feel like it's going to come. Okay, I hit mine a lot more. Let's see if I can knock some of this rust off. See, there we go. Come right off. Just look at that rust right there, man. It's no freaking joke. I hate Michigan, man. Oh my gosh. All right, so that is that. So here is the emergency brake shoes. And if you guys look over here, here is your wheel speed sensor. That's for your ABS, all your springs and whatnot. So what we're actually gonna do, just like we used to do back in the old days, or drum brake days, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the whole emergency brake shoe. Give it a nice fresh, fresh material. This isn't gonna hurt anything. We're just taking off the nastiness. See that? Compared to that, don't want any squeaking or anything. Sometimes that would happen if I applied my e-brake and then went driving. It would. Quink, 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 quink. So, no more. Get this all nice and clean. Why don't you take that airline off? and put our blow gun on. Third drawer down, third drawer down. And uh, when I do these kinds of repairs, I always try to do this stuff in front of a fan. Go ahead and blow all that off. I want all of this stuff to blow away from me. Look at that. Everywhere, down in those cracks, all there. Nasty. Hell yeah. Okay, I like the way that looks. That looks freaking clean. That doesn't look too bad either. I'm gonna do a little bit here. Why don't you get the anti-seize and we're gonna we're gonna paint this, this, this and this area right here from like my screwdriver back so like this area and this all is going to have anti-seize on here let me change my battery i like it i like it i like it probably like like that looks a little too much I mean, it's all right. I just, yeah, I would just spread it out. Yep. So we are prepped for the new rotor. Now I'm going to show you all of the part numbers for uh, the rotors and the pads so you guys know exactly which ones you are going to get. But this is rear driver side. Here it is. Brand new. Brand new. What's a rerun? This is brand new. Ah, this is when George dressed up as a space astronaut. No? No? Okay. New rotor going on. I'm gonna push it all the way on. 
All the way, all the way. Maybe give it a couple of ding, 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 dings. Make sure it's seated again. I like it, I like it. Okay, okay. So when you guys are doing it, make sure to wipe off your paw prints because this is exactly where the brakes are gonna go or the brake pads are gonna lie. And that's what we got brake cleaner for, brake clean mafia. And just go ahead and give it a wipey do. Yep, maybe the back side right here for your handles. I like it, I like it. Okay, so rotor is on and that leaves us, where did, ah, right here. Our bracket, I'm gonna go ahead and pull these, pull these clips out, just like we did on the front. No big deal. See how we have this foot on this side. This is gonna be the outboard side and the inside is that. See how that's gonna be against the rotor? Like we don't want that against the rotor. So we're not reusing them. We're gonna throw them out. Got them, all four of them. Now we're gonna grab the grinder. I'm gonna grind. Not too rusted on here. See how nice that looks? I'll repeat the same thing for this side. So much better when you do this in front of a fan. Then you're not huffing all this stuff. See, I've wore down the side. We need to get that before we go down to the rubber. We'll just use one of these brown ones. These ones just wear out really fast. Heck yeah. All right. all right, all right, since this is all clean, we're gonna go ahead and pop our clips in. See that? That is gonna go in here, and it's gonna just go completely flat all the way down. I like that, it looks good. I think you got the other side. Yep. Frickin' A. Simultaneously. Okay, now we're gonna use our 15 16 bolts and we're going to screw this back onto the axle. Now it is time for our Z36 pads. Remember I was talking about the inside and outside. We don't have an inside or outside on this pad. So we're gonna go ahead and apply a little, little dollop. Oh yeah, that's enough. Just on the ear. And just on the ear, right there. Yep, I like that. So do the same thing to that side. Doing a little brake break teaching course here. Got a, a rookie that hasn't done a whole lot of brakes. And brakes is something that we need to learn. Every, everybody needs to do brakes because it's high. You can't go anywhere and, unless you're going to stop. So something that's easy. Stuff you need to pay attention to. <clears throat> Lubrication. Pressing the caliper pistons back in. So there's some tidbits of stuff that we need to know. Emergency brake 
cable uh, the adjustment. I'm gonna show you where that is located here once we get this caliper back on. Okay, I'm gonna slide this pad in. Oh yeah. Nice. Okay, pad is in. The last thing we're gonna do before we put our caliper on is why don't you give me a dollop of grease on here. Give me a little more. Okay, we'll go ahead and splooge that in because the other one was completely froze. This one. Oh yeah. Put that bad boy right back in his hole. Oh yeah. Okay, now it is caliper time, caliper time. Fingers caliper bolts right here 16 millis so now that we've already pressed the pistons in we're gonna gently look at that look how he put that on that was like he's done this before front slide in rear slide pushed in and caliper pushed on I like it here are the bolts lift the caliper up a little bit pull it up There you go. Nice, nice. 16 milli. Hammer. Nice. Nice. Good feel. Nice. Freaking rear brakes are on. We're going to get this truck. We're going to get the wheel back on. We're going to get it lowered down. We're gonna go through the break-in process for these power stop brakes, cause I'm excited. All right, can't forget these, cause you know you will. Oh, here we go. Check out the part numbers for your rear pads. Your rear pads are those. Front pads are those. Uh, we have a rear rotor left. Have rear rotor right. We have front rotor, and then I already showed you uh, a front rotor left, and we have uh, the front rotor right. I already showed you. Um, but here is our break-in procedure. What they're going to want us to do. It says important break in new brake pads, rotors using the pad. Bedding procedure as follows. Proper pad bedding can prevent rotor warping. Okay, we want, number one, five moderate to aggressive stops from 40 to zero in rapid succession without letting the brakes cool and do not come to a complete stop. If you're forced to stop, complete the stop and either shift the vehicle into park or give room in front so you can allow the vehicle to roll slightly while waiting for the traffic light. The rotors will be very hot and holding down the brake pedal will force the brake pad to contact the rotor and possibly create an imprint on the rotor. This imprint may contribute to the creation of brake judder. So step two, continue the brake, continue the brake in by completing five moderate stops from 35 to five in rapid succession without letting the brakes cool. And it says you should expect to smell some resin as the brakes gets hot after step two. It wants us to continue to drive the vehicle as long as possible without heating the brakes excessively and without coming to a stop. Try for about five minutes at moderate speed. This is the cooling stage. After the brakes have cooled to standard operating temperature, you may use the brakes normally. So without further ado, let's get in the truck and we are going to go from 40 to 10 and not make any stops and see if we can get these. Let's see if we can get these brake pads to bed.
All right, that is the braking procedure for these power stop brakes. We're gonna actually drive around here, go for a little spin, cool these puppies down and finish the last stage. Um, but as we end this video, uh, my question I wanna leave you guys with is, what brakes are you using? Are you doing OEM? Are you doing power stops? Are you tired of the brake dust that's on your wheels, whether you have a Camaro, Mustang, Super Duty, or some other manufacturer? I wanna know, let me know what you got, because you saw what I got, and let me know if this video helped you guys decide what brakes to get, and if it helped you replace them on your truck. Let me know in the comments. I appreciate you guys for watching. Remember to like, comment, sub, share. And I will catch you guys all next time working on a Super Duty, my favorite. See ya!